and welcome to this video where today um, I am going to respond to an email. Before we get into that, I want to just say thank you and apologize to my members for the video I posted for members a couple days ago. Like, I know it was kind of upsetting, kind of heavy. You guys are all amazing, and a lot of you reached out to me, and I appreciate you guys so much. I don't want you to worry about me or anything like that, but I just want to thank you guys. So, thank you. What I want to talk about is I got a really great email from Sam. The the question was good and then he had like follow-up questions. Like it was like, okay, whatever you're going to say here, this is the next thing I'm going to need to know. I like that because like a it shows that at least Sam knows like this is something I need to know, but even if I know that, I'm still going to need to know this and this. And a lot of times when people ask me a question about something, they'll just ask me like one question. So then like when I'm responding, I'm going to try to kind of predict what any follow-up question will be and try to be as thorough as I can. I think it's really good when people at least know that no matter what answer I give you... <laughs> There's going to be like three or four other things you're going to need to hit in order to do the thing that I'm talking about. So that's kind of cool. I wrote him back and asked him if it was cool if I just made a video about this. Sam, I don't know if the name you used in your email is the same name that you write under. I think it is, but I don't want to like dox you or something if uh, that's not the name you write under. So if that is the name you write under, um, under this video, put your, I don't think you could put links in it, but just um, tell people what to search and I'll pin the comment on the top of the comments so people can check your shit out. So the first question he asked here is, how long have I been writing poetry and what exactly is the impetus that kind of pushed you along this far. First thing is, I was in a lot of bands growing up, like from like junior high through. So I was always writing lyrics and shit. And a lot of this stuff I've gone over before, but just to put it all in one place, um, like I grew up reading like Dr. Seuss and Shel Silverstein and then moved into... Edgar Allan Poe and Jim Morrison, Henry Rollins, shit like that. Then started getting really into lyrics. Like I would get like when I was like in sixth grade and I was all into metal and shit, I would get like Hit Parader and Circus and Metallics and um, Metal Edge. Then I would even get like Guitar and Guitar World and magazines like that. And a lot of these magazines would have lyrics of like popular songs, like in little like boxes on the side of the pages. And I would cut all those out and either like put them up on my wall if it was one I really liked. Um, or I had this little like recipe box my mom wasn't using anymore. And it was like one of those things where you open it and it had alphabetized tabs and I would take the songs and I would like put them in the alphabetized tabs. And that was just like my lyric box. And so I would like pull those things out and look at them. And then I started um, copying lyrics out of like the cassette tape J cards or eventually the CD booklets and um, just write out the songs I liked and would put those in the little recipe thing. And like, I didn't realize it at the time that I was like kind of teaching myself like meter, you know, and like teaching myself like what rhymes were good and what rhymes were shit, you know, like um, just doing that kind of stuff. And like, I know, and, and like, I think we talked about this a long ass time ago. We talked about, is it important or helpful to like write out the poems you like like look at a book and find a poem you like and then start like writing it out so you could get the feel for it with free verse i don't think it's that important at all 
but I think if you're trying to learn form, that is very good to do. Um, I don't know if they like teach you to do that, like at school. I don't know for for all of you um, graduate folks and MFA folks. Let me know if that's something that you're supposed to do. So as far as writing goes, I mean, I've been doing it um, since I was probably. I don't know, 11 or 12, but even before that, I was, like, writing little stories and making little shitty comic books. So, um, telling stories and conveying thoughts and trying to put my emotions into words has always been something that I've done. So, I know that there's a lot of people who have a hard time understanding what their emotions are, and understanding how to verbalize things that they're feeling. And I think if you're going to be a writer at all, probably the biggest thing to do would be to try to figure out how to do that. So when you're feeling like that, either like overwhelmed or anxious or whatever... Um, as much as you may not want to, I think that's a really good time to like work on your craft, you know, like see if you could like really verbalize like everything you're feeling from your senses to just your emotions, to your heart, to your soul, to your mind, all that shit. I think I already went off the... Um, question there. Was there a moment in time where you stopped and made a decision to pursue writing? Um, no, it was, it really happened by accident. Um, I was just doing it so much. I've always, I think, kind of been like a hustler in a way. When I was like in high school, I would like make zines and like even when I was a kid, me and my friend used to like convince the other kids in the neighborhood that, um, we could paint their Hot Wheels and make them like look even cooler. And the way we did this was we painted our Hot Wheels. So like we had like our little stupid cars and like we found a bunch of paints um, that were like sparkly paints and we like painted our cars and then we went out and like on the street and we're playing with them and like just like went, oh my god these are so cool and then all the other kids came out and they wanted to see they're like can we do it and i'm like well like if you give me a quarter i'll paint your car and it just like that's just how that fucking happened but i think one of the biggest things and i think this is why it's hard for writers especially because it is such a solitary endeavor. I think, and this is just sales, I guess. And like, I don't have any sales training or anything like that, but you have to make somebody excited to want to read your stuff. You don't, like, you can't just like say like, oh, I wrote this, now read it. Like there has to be like a reason that people are gonna be excited to pick your shit up, you know? And I think this is where a lot of the hate on, like, where you have that argument about death of the author. And we've talked about that here before, too. But I just feel like in this world where gatekeeping is getting, like, less and less and less and less, pretty much anybody could do anything a la social media and websites and stuff like that. I think you have to be a little bit of a salesperson. I think you have to be a little bit of a carnival barker. A little bit of a I don't want to say a snake oil salesman but like I think you have to be a little extra in order to get people through the door and then once people come in and they read your stuff if they like it you have them for life you know like they become like a true lover of your work and then that's easy at that point I think that's why a lot of people, especially maybe my age or a little bit older, have this really hard time bridging the gap between pre-social media world and social media world or whatever the fuck we're in now because everything changed like drastically almost overnight and all the things that people used to do in order to like build an audience or gain traction. It's just it's just completely different now. It's not even the same thing at all. And it took me a while. And like the biggest thing for me, and this is a little bit different, but the biggest thing for me was 
I used to make a living just being in a band and playing shows and selling CDs and stickers and t-shirts and pins um, and posters and stuff like that. I was okay. And I was living in Southern California. It was crazy. And then the internet happened and everything fucking changed. And as soon as like music became a digital commodity, you really had to lay into selling merchandise because it was like the music was free. And so if you wanted to make any money being a musician, um, at least in the band side of stuff, like you had to like, you give the music away for free and hopes that people will like it so much that they'll buy your t-shirts. You know what I'm saying? And um, that really changed everything for me and um, just made the world a completely different place. And I don't think I was able to keep up. Like there was a moment where it was okay. Like during the MySpace days, um, MySpace was great for music um, and for bands and for touring. That was just fantastic. Like that period. That was fine. When MySpace died, it was like, say goodbye to fucking making money off a band. Or at least for me. I'm like, I just did not know how to continue. Like, it was like, Facebook was happening, but Facebook wasn't good for bands. Um, then there was like, all these, like, you had like your Reverb Nation and your SoundCloud. And, um, I mean, I guess Bandcamp started pretty soon after that, maybe. I don't fucking know. It was just like there was this period where it was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Where do I go? You know, it just, it wasn't great. Anyway, and then during that time is when I got into filmmaking and um, started making movies and writing scripts. Then when I wanted to kill producers and actors, I started writing um, ebooks right when the Kindle Gold Rush kind of took off. And so then I just did that and um, was doing that until I, the, the bottom has not fallen out on ebooks yet, but I feel like, like I had to step back and take a look at ebooks because I felt like shit wasn't going the right way. And then like when I started doing chat books, that felt more like me because that felt like more like how I started doing shit when I was like making zines and that worked for me. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I feel like I went all over the place on that too. So sorry about that. Was writing always a passion? Just creating has always been a passion, but like anything you do, whether it's music or film or, um, like obviously books and poetry and shit like that. Um, all of these things need to be written. You know, you need to have some sort of thing in order to make the thing. So, yeah. Um, in addition to those get to know you questions, I have some questions regarding how you built what I would call your business. Okay. <clears throat> so now we're getting into the nitty gritty. Um, in addition to those getting to know you questions, I have some questions regarding how you built what I would call your business. How do you sell your chat books? I heard they were on Etsy, but I think I heard that change. Um, yeah, let me just keep going here. Is Etsy a good place to start selling poetry books? How did you direct sales to the page? Was it fruitful? What advice would you give for someone looking to do something similar? Let me see. Um, how I built my business was honestly one little fucking book at a time. Um, I put out the first uh, poetry chat book in... I want to say 2016, but it might have been 2017. Like, I might have wrote it in 2016, but I didn't put it out until 17. Or it was, like, right in, like, December 16. Now, I'm saying it like this because the first time I did this, it was because there was a zine fest coming up, and I wanted to go to it. And then I started talking to the person putting it on, 
And I found out that tabling at the Zine Fest was really cheap. And so I was like, oh shit, maybe I should do it. Because I had just started Weird Mask, which was my um, like short fiction zine. Um, and I'm like, oh, that would be cool. I could like hawk some Weird Mask issues. I think I had the first two out. Maybe the first three out. I can't remember. Now I'm getting confused on years. I think I'm fucking this story up because the first time I did it, I didn't have any um, weird mask issues. I just had the chat books. Okay. So, so I did, uh, all my friends are dead and I made 20 copies of it because I didn't think anyone would want it first off. And I'm like, oh, okay, so this is cool. I'll do this. And I'm trying to remember if I sold any before the event. I think I told some people about it online. And so I sold like seven or eight of them. And like whenever you first do something, like the people who care about you and who like support you are going to want to um, go out and buy that book. Like if the people who found out that I did this chat book knew I was going to be doing like a chat book every month they probably never would have fucking bought the first one, you know? So I did that. And so when I applied to the thing, it was like three months away or something like that. So I had time. And so I just started writing a bunch of poetry because I was already writing some, but I was just writing poetry. And I basically did a thing where I was like, okay, like... So the next book I'll put out was um, uh, Ingrown Air. And no, no, no. The, um, the Extended Bird was the second book. And, um, or The Exhausted Bird. Jesus Christ, I don't even know the names of my books. And those poems, I think, were written all in January. And so I was just like, oh, okay, so this is the book of the poems I wrote in January. And this is how I was theming books at the time. Um, when I did All My Friends Are Dead, um, I did that because within like one month, um, there were one, two, three, four, five, five people I knew died and three of them were through suicide. And... Um, that was just like too fucking much for me, you know? And so that was that, if we want to talk impetus for fucking, um, writing poetry that did it like that fucked me up. And so I wrote all my friends are dead. And that was the December book because those were the poems I wrote in December. And then, um, the exhausted bird was January and then both of those books were relatively short. Like they were like, I don't know, like maybe 28 pages, 20 pages to 28 pages. By February, I was in fucking full fucking gear and I was just jamming. I wrote um, Ingrown Air and that was probably my biggest chat book. Like, and this was again, me learning what my printer could handle and what a stapler can handle because I put way too many poems in that book. It was fat as fuck and I could barely fucking staple them together and I could barely fold the fucking books. It was like 60 fucking pages of like folded printer paper. Um, so that was kind of a nightmare, but, um, so that was the February book. And then was that February, March? It might've been like a February, March thing. I can't remember if it was two months or one month. It's gotta be two months. That book was huge anyway. And then the next book was the next month's poems. And that was acid. And then after that, I started trying to actually theme the books. And my first attempt at that was rats which was going to be a chat book about all the pet rats I had throughout my life and not necessarily about the actual rats themselves, but the events around me owning that rat kind of thing. And then that wasn't something I wanted to write about. So like it kind of like fell through the cracks. And so that was like an unfinished book. I think I did like three or four 
poems in that. And um, during that time, I was also doing the poems that would end up being DNF'd. I think there was one other book. I can't remember. But anyway, all of those books are in Fingering the Mundane, which I'm doing a new edition of soon here. But whatever. So when I first started doing any of this, it was like I would tell people online, hey, I'm selling something. Let me know if you want one. And they would... Um, like say they would want one or hit me up on PayPal or just send me something. But a lot of it too was I was just sending people stuff, like people who were my friends who I thought would appreciate it. So the first, I don't know, like maybe six books I did, seven books I did, were basically me making gifts to send out to people, which I think is a really good way to start if you don't have like a fan base because a lot of times when you do something that's really personal and really like meaningful and you share it with people who already care about you the encouragement you'll get from that is usually huge and here's another fucking tip if you know somebody who is either kind of a shitty person or who's very narcissistic and doesn't like it when you get ahead and they don't, or just someone who is looking out for your best interests and is always like, don't quit your day job and pulls that kind of shit, do not send your first chat books to those fucking people. Because you already know they are going to talk you out of your dreams. So don't fucking show them anything. Like, fuck them. They could find out later on their own. There's other people in your life who probably are really excited to see you chase something. So then the question here is, um, do you have people like that in your life? Because if you don't have supportive people in your life, you need a new fucking circle of friends. And that's a fucking hard ass thing to fucking say and a worse thing to even fucking think about. But you do need to like try to broaden your scope and try to find more uplifting people. It's just you do. Because if you, if you surround yourself with shitty people who knock you down all the time, you are always going to be that beat little puppy. Okay? So like they always say the thing like you're the algamation of your five closest friends. Okay, so if your five closest friends or the five closest people in your life, if those people are shitty people that like push you down all the time, get the fuck away from those people. The next thing would be like, um, how do you actually start writing and is Etsy good? Here's the deal. Etsy is good if you have absolutely no other choice, but... From what I've seen, Etsy will not move traffic to your Etsy page. It used to not be that bad, but um, most of the traffic that I got on Etsy came from me generating traffic over there. And you can see the little, um, what do you call it, uh, the statistics like how much traffic is driven from Etsy search, how much traffic is driven from direct links. I'm the direct link guy. And it was something crazy. Like 98% of my traffic came from me like pushing people to my shit. Now, the way Etsy seems to be doing stuff is they're charging more. They're even charging me and I don't even have anything up on there anymore. But you can't cancel the account unless you like send them an email and ask them to cancel your account. So like I'm just, I'm pissed off at how they fucking do business and that's why I'm not fucking on there anymore. But the other thing that I was having a hard time with was my um, inventory would not be updated. Like like when like I would sell shit and the number wouldn't change. And this only happened a few times, but it was enough to piss me off. So then Etsy would still have my books up, like even books that I sold out of. And then people would buy the book that I sold out of. And I'm like, how the fuck did that even happen? Like, there isn't any. Like, why the fuck is this? So what I started doing was, um, like, if I had 30 copies of a book, I would put on Etsy that I only had 15. 
like I didn't start that drastic, but that's what I had to end up doing. And then like if like I was selling a lot of them, I would add in inventory as like it would go because I just didn't want to do that thing where I have to write someone an email and go, hey, sorry, this is actually sold out. I could either give you your money back or give you something else and then give you something else extra for your trouble. So it was just like a fucking pain in the ass. Um, I am probably going to like, there's, I'm doing like a big, like relaunch of how I sell everything that I'm hoping is going to be up and running on February 1st. But, um, as of right now, what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to do Shopify for a little bit and see how that goes. Um, because you can integrate Shopify with YouTube so instead of me just saying, like, go to my Etsy shop, like, at the bottom of my video right here, there'll be, like, a fucking thing. Because, like, you could get t-shirts and shit like that from me now. But, like, you could actually probably get my books, like, right below the video. So that is going to be something cool if I could put that together. Then I want to actually start selling my shit through my website um, until I'm out of the current stock of chat books. And then once those are gone, I'm going to um, basically for the foreseeable future just do ebooks, whether they are like Amazon ebooks or PDFs, or do um, audiobooks for my members, or do um, print on demand through Amazon. And I don't think I want to do print on demand for the chat books. I just think those are going to be too expensive. I, I don't know. For those of you who have done print on demand for smaller books, like Ethan, if you want to drop me an email and let me know what the cost per book for that is, that would be really fucking cool to find out. And then shit, if I'm not having to fucking do all the printing and stapling and folding and mailing. Maybe that's like a pretty good gig. I don't know. I was just going to do big collections of all the chat books and paperbacks, like fingering the mundane is, but, um, I don't know. Like, let me, let me know what you guys think about that. The other thing I'm thinking about doing is doing some kind of membership thing that gives you access to everything I have. So all of my books, all of my chat books, all of my um, music, eventually all of my films, if I could get my films back, which is a whole other topic for a different day. Um, so those are kind of like my, uh, like my goals to try to get sorted out by the end of this month. So anyway, so I think if you're just starting out and you don't want to pay huge fees, Etsy is a good place to do it. I really think like doing, if you're gonna make chat books, trying to find local events like zine fests or I don't know, like book fairs or anything like that in your area is a really good way to get that going um, if you wanna start selling shit. I also think, I mean, I guess it depends on how quickly you write. I did a video about this a long ass time ago, but it was about, um, scarcity and rarity and i think with especially chapbooks that's a big fucking thing because the only thing that makes like my chapbooks different from my ebooks is that like my chapbooks there's only so many of them and if you want a piece of that piece of art like that's the only place you could get it and if there's only like 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 like that's it though that's all there is and i think that is more enticing and then plus the fact that like i made it by hand you know like i didn't press the fucking paper but i fucking printed it out folded it up and put it in the fucking envelope for you guys i think that's uh like i don't want to say a selling point but i think that makes what you're making feel more I don't want to just say homemade, but like just like more from the heart or something. It makes your readers feel like they're a part of something 
instead of just like, oh, I got this book from this guy. And that's one of the main reasons why I don't like ebooks because they don't feel personal. And I feel like my art is so fucking personal that when I'm working with ebooks, it just doesn't feel that way. But even though I feel that way, a lot of readers don't. A lot of readers don't give a shit and they want like accessibility. They want to be able to just pick up their Kindle and like find whatever poetry book of yours there is. Like that's just where we go from what what what's good for the goose. You know, you guys know the saying. Ugh. How and how did you direct sales to that page? Okay, so directing sales to the page would be through social media. Um, through, but again, if you don't have, I mean, this is up to you. If you don't have a big following and you also don't think that you know people well enough to have them just like go, oh, I'll send you an invoice through PayPal. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. If you feel like that's too weird, then yeah, do the Etsy shop because then at least Etsy gives the buyer this false sense of security because Etsy's garbage. Okay. Let's just all fucking say it. Um, there's other places you can sell stuff on, but those platforms you have to pay like really high fees because you're getting insanely awesome functionality and like a lot of control over what you're doing. So, that's the fucking toss up. But I know some people even sell their chat books on eBay. Like if you have an eBay account, you don't want to set up an Etsy account, just sell them on eBay. And even if it's like, you're not looking to get a shit ton of traffic from that, but like you could just go, oh yeah, I'm just selling stuff on eBay right now. And then just give somebody the link, you know, that's fine. It's like eBay does this thing where, um, as far as like listing fees and shit, like you get the first, uh, what is it? 2,500 listings free or some ridiculous thing like that. I might be wrong on the number, but it's some ridiculous number like that. Um, I, I think you still have to pay a, um, final sale fee, but, um, look up, look at what the numbers are. Um, I just, I can't remember what they are. My Etsy shop was very fruitful for a really long time until I feel like I started kind of screwing the pooch when I started feeling, when my depression took over. See, that's the one thing about eBooks that's kind of cool. Like when you go through a big bout of depression, the eBooks are there and you don't have to fucking do anything. With the chat books, if you go through a big bit of a depression, like, you still have to, like, make them. You still have to, like, package them. You still have to mail them. You still have to, like, push them a lot harder. Not that Amazon pushes your shit very hard, but um, it's just, it's less work. So if you're a busy person, if you don't have a lot of time to do a lot of shit, I would say try to do something like that. Um... There are some people, like in Anarchy Crew, who have put together some beautiful digital chapbooks. And you have a lot of, like, you have a lot more room to play with. Because they don't have to just be, like, plain white pages. Especially if you're doing PDFs. Like, you could fucking do all sorts of shit. Pictures, like, um... I don't know, like, you've seen what a fucking PDF looks like, I don't have to fucking tell you, but, like, you could do a lot more with that than I was ever able to do with my printer, because my printer can only print black, like, uh, the color part on the printer broke years ago, so that's just how that goes, so let's see, what advice would you have for someone looking to do something similar, I'm trying to think if there's any advice that I haven't talked about, that I think would be good advice. I'm gonna say it like this. Hear me out before you start having any like conniptions about this. The best thing you can do is be consistent. Now, I'm not saying you have to publish stuff every month because obviously it burns you out. Like, I mean, I don't know if that's what's wrong with me right now, but I have gone through a bit of burnout. Um, I mean, I put out a fucking chapbook every month for three years 
Um, and then <laughs> a bunch before that too. But, um, and then I liked it. I missed last month. So I'm going to try to do two this month. Shh. I don't know if it's going to happen. We're crossing our fingers here. Um, but when I mean consistent, I mean consistent with your audience. So if you only put a book out once a year, that's fine. As long as you are being consistent with your audience. Like whether, and basically I think everyone should just find at least one social media thing that they can use. Whether it's YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, X, whatever. Like whatever the fuck it is, just get really good at connecting with your audience as often as possible on that platform. Or if it's a mailing list, which everyone should be doing. And if you're not doing a mailing list, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, I'm not very good with my mailing list, but when I use my mailing list, it fucking converts. And it's like, dude, like, why am I not doing my mailing list? Like, I I probably do, like, one email a month, and I need to be doing way more than that. I really fucking do. So, I think last year, my New Year's resolution was to do more with my mailing list. And I think I achieved that goal, but, like, it was nowhere near what I was hoping for. So, consistency through engagement with your audience. And then put out as much stuff as you can but the engagement with your audience is more important because like without your audience like what are you putting books out for you know like there need to be readers for the books that you put out so i'm sure i've done a video on it before building a mailing list whether you use like mailchimp or mailer light to start off with um because it's free for a certain amount of subscribers or Substack. Like I know people are doing Substack stuff now. And I don't know if you can collect email addresses through Substack or if Substack does it for you. If you can't collect the email addresses, then I would say don't do Substack. Um, But I know some of you have Substacks who watch this. So let me know if that's something you can do because I haven't... um, I haven't pulled the trigger on that, but like I basically focus on YouTube because that's where a lot of my readers are. And when I've done stuff with like Instagram, as cool as Instagram is, and as much as I like the people who I hang out with on Instagram, Instagram doesn't convert like YouTube does. And Instagram doesn't even convert as well as Facebook does. So, like, when I post stuff on my website, it automatically posts on my Facebook page, or I don't even know if it's a page or a profile or whatever. When I look to see where my website traffic's coming from, a lot of it, like, I would say most of it comes from Facebook above any other thing, which is crazy. Blows my mind. But maybe it's because people are on Facebook reading posts. So, reading like a blog post makes sense. Whereas like you here on YouTube, you guys just like listening to me talk. So the last thing you want to do now is like go read something that I fucking typed on a fucking like WordPress fucking thing. But anyway, so consistency through your audience, um, put out as much as you can when you can don't kill yourself over it. Um, do a mailing list, set up a landing page. Um, most email service providers like MailChimp or MailerLite will offer you ways to do a landing page in case you don't want to actually like build a website, which like for the longest time I thought was the most important thing in the world. But like, I'm feeling more and more that like having a website, you could get away with not having a website. So I'm just saying, um, But also, um, if you are on Instagram um, and that's working for you, um, you you don't even need to have a website if you have like a link tree or something like that that you have in your bio on Instagram, you know, um, that just has like, this is my website, this is where you could get a free ebook or something, this is where you could buy this book on Amazon, this is where you could buy this book on Amazon, sign up for my mailing list. Like, boom, like you, you're rocking the link tree. Um, 
So there's that. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Sam then goes on and says, I just find that Amazon is frustrating, saturated, and I don't quite support their practices either. Dude, preach. Um, yeah, I, I hear you there. Um, Amazon is frustrating. Amazon is saturated. And I don't support their practices, but I think there are ways to be seen on Amazon and more importantly, being found on Amazon. Like just know that when all of us are starting out, we have to generate our own traffic. We have to drive our traffic. Like Amazon's not going to do it for us. Etsy's not going to do it for us. Your mom's not going to do it for us. Like, we have to do that. But once we get people over to those places, especially if they are people that fit the Amazon algorithm for the category that your book is in, that's very fucking important. That's how you fucking make that happen. So like when you put out a poetry book on Amazon, don't tell your family about it who doesn't read poetry and your neighbor who doesn't read poetry because then when they go on there and buy that book, Amazon's going to look at their also bots and it'll be like, oh, your mom bought a cookbook, your dad bought a crossword puzzle, and your neighbor bought a conspiracy book on who really killed Kennedy. That tells Amazon that they have no idea how to fucking sell your book because those things are so far apart. Like, they don't know where to do that. So when you first put a book up on Amazon, you need to make sure that the only people you're telling about it are people who read that kind of shit. So like, um, maybe hit some forums up uh, where people are like talking about poetry and selling poetry books and shit like that. Talk to people who you know who buy poetry. If you're not buying a lot of poetry on Amazon, then like you don't buy your book either. Like that first initial like two or three weeks, that needs to be strictly for people who are just buying poetry. And then we would go from here to do you get Amazon ads to target people who buy poetry? Maybe that might be something to look into just to start off, just to see how much traffic you can get from a poetry audience for your poetry book, then tell everybody to go buy it because then there'll be so much other information in the algorithm that you telling your family to go pick up your book isn't going to fuck it up. If you understand what I'm saying. So that's just a little Amazon tidbit. Just in general, what did you do to get where you are with your printing, your chat books and your business? Oh fuck. I would say, persistency and stupidity I think are probably because I think most people <laughs> most people would have fucking quit a long fucking time ago but I'm either too dumb or too stubborn to realize that like oh dude maybe you shouldn't fucking do this anymore maybe you should just like try to suck it up and like be a normal fucking person but yeah so that's me dumbass in the room where did you get where you are with your printing if we're talking about just like printing the chat books and stuff like that it's just like, I don't know, like I have a printer that I've had for really a long time and it's on its last legs already. Um, and I, when I buy ink for it, I buy the XL cartridges and I buy the refurbished cartridges. I do not buy like the high price ink from the, I have an Epson and I don't buy Epson ink. I buy like like recycled cartridges with um, like generic ink in it and it's fine. But if you buy the cartridges, especially if you have an HP and you buy those HP inks, dude, you will go broke within a month. Like those things fucking just destroy your wallet. Um, they're so expensive and they don't last very long. And then the other thing is, if you have a printer, make sure your printer has a grayscale setting. Because if you have a grayscale setting, it's going to thin the ink out a little bit, which makes your ink um, go a little bit longer. Um, so there's that. The chapbooks, like I try to do different things with them. Um, like, uh, here, let me just use example. So this one here, this is the latest one. This one, um, 
I got some cardstock. Um, it's like pretty thick. It's too thick for my printer. So you got to figure out if the printer you're getting has good cardstock settings. So there's that. Um, and then there's the the fly leaf I did with just like a different color paper. And then I have the um, newsprint interior. And again, there's only 20 of this book. Um, and the newsprint is, it's funny because newsprint used to be cheaper than fucking normal printer paper. Um, and it's kind of not anymore. And depending on, it's weird because sometimes it's really cheap and then other times it's like three or four times the cost. And there was this one point where I thought like there was like a paper shortage or something. Um, because like you hear all these people like bitching about supply chain issues and shit. And, um, I don't, I don't think that's at all what it ever was. I think it's just, there's times when there's a lot of it, so they don't have to sell it for as much. And then, um, it becomes scarce. And so they charge more for it. It's the same shit with chat books. When you have a lot of chat books, you could sell them for a lot less, but then when you're running out of them, you could bump the price up a little bit. And you're not, you're not doing that to fucking rip people off. You're doing it because you're a fucking artist and you're running out of something that you were selling five minutes ago, you know? So, yeah. So, um, that's how that works. But, like, after years of doing this and having all different kinds of paper stock laying around, um, which you can't really see because I'm in the way, but, like, I have, like, a shelving unit over there that's just paper, um, it's kind of a nightmare actually, but, um, when you're doing it for so long, you end up getting stuff and then you end up finding like shit. Like there was this one paper I got because someone I knew, like when they found out that I have lots of paper and, um, I print books out, they're like, Oh, I have this Rima stuff. I never wanted to use. Do you want it? And just like shit like that. And you're like, fuck yes. Like kick down, you know? Um, then you start like just kind of keeping track of different like sales. And depending on where you buy stuff, I do buy a lot of stuff on Amazon just because of the shipping. Um, because when I order stuff from other like paper suppliers, like the price of the paper will be cheaper. But then like they want like fucking a ridiculous amount of money to get it to me. And it's just like, I'm like, okay, well, that's fucking dumb. Um, and then, like, you could, like, drive around if you have, like, paper supply or office supply places near you. Um, I have noticed a lot of times, like, you'll go online on a certain store and find a price for something you like. And then you go to the store. And then when you're in the store, that item is like 2 or $3 more. And that's weird. And usually if you bitch about it and show them on the website that it was less, they'll fucking go, oh, okay. But um, a lot of times, too, like that's they get you with the low price on the website so they can fuck you with the shipping. So um, I don't know. It's just like Amazon is just so easy. And it's like every other fucking company out there is like doing it the the most like they're trying really hard to make you not want to shop with them they they make it really easy for you to go i'm just gonna fucking go with amazon even though i don't like them because you are being a piece of shit <laughs> so um that's kind of one of those fucking things in your business. And again, like um, a lot of this, and like you say, I have a lot of writing sitting around and it needs to go out. Yeah, then you just got to put it out. Necessity is the mother of invention. So figure out the best way to do it, whether it's doing broadsides, whether it's doing chat books, whether it's doing one big, fat, fucking huge ass book that you could like kill somebody with if you dropped it on their head, you know? Like, do whatever you feel is the best path forward for you. When I do these folded chapbooks like this, um, I try to stay in between 28 and 40 pages. Um, when you go less than 40 it, or less than 28, like, I feel like there's not a lot 
of content there. When you go over 40, the book's hard to fold. So that's just a <sighs> chapbook. Then you have to understand that you're putting something together in multiples of four. So keep that in mind when you're putting it together. Um, as far as like what programs, I use Pages on my Mac. Um, and then a program called Create Booklet. A lot of people um, who are smarter than me um, use um, InDesign. That's supposed to be really good. Um, some people I know just make um, the PDF versions on their phone and do all the shit. I don't even know how that's fucking possible, but apparently it is. And then other people, I'm not going to name any names, put entire chapbooks together by just building them one page at a time and um, then printing out each individual page and then putting that paper back in the printer to print the next page across from it. Go out of their way to make it very tricky and difficult to do something. Um, but then they don't ask for help until after the fact, so I can't fucking do anything. So I'm not calling you out, but you know who I'm talking to. So there's that. Like, I think something that um, Adam's doing right now is fucking awesome. He's doing um, audiobooks of his poetry and putting them up on Bandcamp. That's brilliant. Um, it doesn't cost anything to put it up, and then people could listen to it, people could buy it, like whatever. If you like reading your stuff, that's a good way to go too. Oh, and then we, you were, he was asking about poems about fucking. I'm out of poems about fucking. Um, the ebook is on Amazon, but the actual book is um, not available anymore. This came up to about um, me leaving. So Sam, let me know if um, your name and your email is the name I could tell people about. And again, put that in the comments and I'll fucking pin it. But yeah, so that was kind of like the long answer to um, Sam's questions. And I hope I hit those. And if there's any like follow-up questions or anything like that, Leave them in the comments below um, or send me another email. But the other thing Sam brought up was me um, leaving and going on kind of like a nomadic vacation life thing, um, which I think I'm going to do. And um, I mean, I know I'm doing it like it just I'm finishing up. <laughs> finishing up everything I'm trying to do here. Like I'm, I'm thinking that everything will start in March, maybe into April before I actually leave here. I need to know where people want me to be in America as soon as possible, because, um, as soon as I can, I'm going to be out of the country for the foreseeable future. LA's inspiration has worn thin. I'm not seeing it the way I saw it when I first got here. Um, for those of you who know me, um, I move around a lot. Like every two or three years I move. And when I move, I usually go into a completely different place. Um, I feel like I go places and I absorb as much inspiration as I can from that place. And then the place is just dead to me. And is this my fault? Yeah. Because I could be exploring more and going further into this town trying to find stuff. But I feel like I've exhausted it. And that's just me. So I need something completely different. You know, I mean, I fucking lived in Orange County. I moved to Oregon. I came back. Went and lived by the beach. I fucking moved to the valley um, over by the studios. And then moved to North Hollywood. And then moved to Big Bear. Like up in the mountain um, near a lake. And then... Um, that got old, and I moved out into the middle of nowhere in the desert. And then that got old. And then I moved back to L.A. So, like, I, I go all over the place. But a lot of it, too, is my inspiration and what I'm doing. There is a list of places outside of the U.S. that I'm going to be going and kind of slowly traveling through. Not necessarily backpacking, but more like I'll go to a place for a few weeks to a month and then go to another place 
and just keep going places and seeing what life is like there. And I, I'm not saying I want to be a travel writer by any means, but like the, I'm sure the poetry will flow that way. And I think too, a little of it has to do with the fact that I'm tired of writing about myself right now. I don't necessarily like the person I am inside right now. Writing about that is like really difficult for me at the moment. A lot of you will know when I first moved to LA, I ended up doing two chat books about LA, like right when I got here, because I was writing about the things I was seeing and the things I was experiencing. But the last like six months of my life, seven months, eight months of my life have been complete and utter fucking torment inside. I, I can't keep writing about that shit. And I thought that this wound would heal, and it's not. It doesn't seem like it is at all. I need to be in a place where I could just heal and not be so worried about life, not be so worried about surviving. Me and my therapist were talking about this. Am I running away from something, or am I running to something? I feel like I'm running to something because, like, I know I can't run away from my shit. No matter where I go, I'm taking my problems with me. But I'm just tired of the view I have from here with these problems. The cost of living pretty much everywhere else in the world is a fraction of what I do now. So if I go somewhere else doing what I do, I could probably actually live okay instead of just like barely getting by. That is the plan. So with that said, I'm getting rid of everything I own. So all the books I have, all most of the clothes I have, my furniture, like I know this sounds stupid, but if there's anything you guys know I have that you want, <laughs> you gotta fucking tell me before it's too late because I'm getting rid of everything. So if you're in the LA area and you need bookcases, or if you ever wanted to open your own bookstore, I have thousands of books. Um, you'll you'll be set. I'm not getting rid of all of my books. I, I'm keeping my poetry books, like chat books that you guys have sent me and stuff like that. I'm keeping all that. I'm keeping some of my uh, vintage paperbacks, but a very small amount of those. And then I think pretty much everything else I'm getting rid of. But again, the, um, we're still a couple months away from me being able to pull the trigger on this. I have to finish up this legal thing with my film shit. I need, I need to get my passport. I'll probably be doing little videos about all this shit anyway, but, um, I need to, there's little things I want to get. Like I'm going to actually go ahead and pull the trigger on that free write thing because I don't want to fucking take my computer down to a beach to fucking type. I need this for making videos and for making my books and making ebooks. And that's another thing. Since I'm not going to be anywhere near a printer, like I need to know how much it costs to do print on demand for chapbooks or I'm just going to be doing digital chapbooks. So like my whole business model is changing, but at the same time, every couple years, I fucking completely change everything I do anyway just because I feel like like chaos makes me like i have to throw myself into the maelstrom in order to fucking like feel like i have control over anything because when things are stagnant i feel stagnant i need things to be like ripping out of control at all times in order to feel like i have any i don't know maybe it's just an excitement thing i don't know fuck maybe i should just be doing drugs and everything would be fine but since I don't, I got to fucking throw my life into fucking chaos all the time. So yeah, so if anyone out there wants to see me, wants to put on an event with me before I go, you're running out of time and I don't know how long I'm going to be gone. I might be gone like a couple months. I might be gone a couple years. I have no idea. Like this is like completely like there's no plan other than get the fuck out of here. Um, thank you for the email. If any of you guys have emails like this, like if you guys have questions like this or specific questions send them to me this like seriously answering your questions makes making videos a lot easier because i'm like oh we could just talk about this question it makes it great keep buying my books again if you want any of my books right now you got to email me because the shop's not open yet um hopefully it will be soon subscribe join anarchy crew type hard everybody and i will talk to you all later
just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.